Is the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, known as UNRWA, really complicit in the Hamas-led attack against Israel on October 7? Well, that's the claim that has led to the US, UK, EU, and other allied states withdrawing their funding from the UN agency that was set up to provide aid and development for what is now 6 million registered Palestinian refugees. Almost immediately within 24 hours of the International Court of Justice putting Israel on trial for violations of the Genocide Convention, claims that 12 employees of UNRWA were involved in the events of October 7 stole the headlines. Despite the fact that there has been no independent inquiry into these allegations, many of which amount to little more than innuendo, in addition to the fact that nine of the employees in question have been fired by the UN agency and two are dead, UNRWA as a whole is still being accused of complicity with the armed actions of Hamas in Gaza. The Israeli intelligence dossier produced on the matter, which was reviewed by the New York Times, gave a little clarity to Israel's claims, such as that those accused were working primarily as teachers and that one individual allegedly helped kidnap an Israeli soldier's body. Yet, in the Western media, there is little mention of the fact that almost all of the information Israel is presenting relies on interrogations of Hamas members by the Shin Bet, which is notorious for extracting confessions via torture. Almost left out of all Western media narratives is that UNRWA has roughly 13,000 employees in Gaza alone, which means that the 12 accused represent a whopping 0.092% of all the workers there. In addition to this, none of those accused work in senior positions. On top of this, Israel has frequently sought to undermine UNRWA and made allegations in the past which were investigated independently and proven non-credible. Furthermore, on December 29, the Times of Israel reported on a high-profile classified Israeli foreign ministry document recommending a free-stage strategy to push UNRWA out of Gaza after the war. The first stage of the plan to compose a, quote, comprehensive report on alleged UNRWA cooperation with Hamas, which rules Gaza, and the entanglement of the UN body that provides welfare and humanitarian services for Palestinian refugees, end quote. To top things off, Israeli officials have long spoken against the existence of UNRWA. In large part, due to it being the sole UN body responsible for registering Palestinian refugees, keeping UN Resolution 194, or the right of return under international law, alive. Although Israel gives any Jew the right to obtain Israeli citizenship, Palestinian refugees are prohibited from returning Jews solely to their ethnicity. Under former U.S. President Donald Trump, Washington also cut its funding to UNRWA until the decision was overturned by the Biden administration. While Gaza is suffering through an greatly imposed famine, described by UN aid chief Martin Griffiths as the worst ever humanitarian crisis, withdrawing funds from UNRWA could lead to mass loss of human life. Therefore, without any investigation independently and with evidence that the Israeli foreign ministry has been conspiring to launch a campaign of this exact nature against UNRWA, the Western nations that have withdrawn their funding from the UN agency are participating in an act of collective punishment. All this as the mainstream corporate media aid in putting the UN on trial and undermining its credibility at a time when Israel actually stands trial at the world's preeminent court for committing a genocide.